everyone, I'm Elizabeth from Flowers Talk Tivoli and welcome into my dining room. When we first bought this house uh, about 12 years ago, this room was actually the living room and our dining room was in the living room. And my husband got creative and knocked down some walls and created this really wonderful open concept space. And him and my son built this beautiful feature wall for me with the um, all of the uh, the wood embellishment on it and I just love it so I'm excited to have you have you see it and one of the one of my most favorite things about this room is I love this picture my husband and I um, as soon as we saw it we knew it was the perfect the perfect picture to, to hang in the focal I love the little shots of red in uh, in her shoes and it picks up the red in the um, in the sideboard here as well so I'm going to show you how to make a couple of just really simple vase arrangements that you can use either on a kitchen island, you can use it um, as a welcome in your entryway, you can use it on a bathroom counter depending on the size, but the arrangement I'm going to make uh, for you today is going to be in this vase here and I'm just going to make it to go in this space. So. I really like working with different mixes of metals, whether it's the brassy golds to the, uh, to the silvery um, heavy metals. I love the mix together. I love a little bit of that industrial feel, which works really well with um, just kind of the natural elements we have in our home. We have um, this big barn board table that um, my son created for me, and just the metals just pick up the different cool tones in the, um, in the gray walls as well. So I'm going to start off with some really nice greens. We have these bunches of greens at the store. We call them frosty mixes. They're perfect because it's not a whole bunch of one thing. It's a whole bunch of little types of green, which is really great when you're um, when you're wanting to do some um, just some different vase arrangements. You don't need a whole bunch of greenery. So we've got the Carolina sapphire. We have pine. We have cedar. We have magnolia that you know I love so much. I try to use it in absolutely everything from fall to spring because it's so pretty. Um, and again, when you are um, even with greens, you want to clean them off really well so there's no um, there's no greenery here. So when we're putting it in the vase, it's going to be nice and clean. There's not going to be any greenery under the water line, which is going to grow bacteria, which is going to have your um, floral arrangement life in half. So just give those a fresh cut, make sure that they're nice and clean. Again, cleaning up all those lower greens. And seeing as this arrangement is going to be placed here, it can be more one-sided. So the metal is nice too, when, um, or even just colored vases are nice. Solid color, you don't have to worry about uh, if the water does, if you miss a day of changing the water, if the water does get a little bit skunky. So you're using a really pair, a sharp pair of scissors or um, you can use a florist knife, sharp pair of pruners can work as well. And then all these little pieces that I'm cutting off in the bottom of my greens, I'm gonna keep those as well because those will be perfect to go in little containers like this. So again, pulling off those lower greens, nice and clean, cut. I love the smell of the, the different pine and the cedars and the juniper we're getting at this time of year. It just smells so good. And it's nice to bring that fragrance into your home. This is the Carolina Sapphire. It's blue greenery. It has a bit of a spicy fragrance to it. Again, keeping all those little guys. These little bits are golden. You can make little arrangements with them. Okay, so just a nice mix of greenery, different textures there. And I'm gonna keep it really simple. I'm just gonna do a couple of focal flowers. You could just do um, all greens if you wanted. A couple bunches of the frosty fern or frosty bouquets in there look really great. Really nice mix of just greens. Or you could add a couple of focal flowers in there. I really love this kale, this flowering kale that just came in. Um, it's got that dark purple to it. It's almost like a moody tone. Just really, really pretty. So I would sit that nice and low. I think it looks very pretty from the top. Not a huge fan of how it looks from the side. So I'm gonna angle that nicely there so you can see that. And then I'm gonna put in some of these red arachna orchids. So 
these guys here. Really, really nice. It will pick up the red that um, is in the tone of her shoes, as well as you can see some of the uh, ornaments on the Christmas tree have that red in them as well. There you go. So just bringing it out, fanning it out a bit. And I also have these really nice orangey yellow ilex berries in the holly family. It's a bit more of an unusual combination than you would uh, traditionally see, um, staying away from just the whites and um, whites and reds. Not an overly huge fan of the white and red together. I think it can just be a little too much of a theme, whereas I like just kind of the natural tones bringing in something a little bit uh, interesting and different that you wouldn't normally see, such as the flowering kale. The red uh, orchids are really beautiful. They pick up, again, the red in the tree and the red in the, um, the, red in the uh, piece of art as well. And just really simple. So this arrangement should last, um, I'd say upwards of two weeks. The greenery will last a lot longer than that, but um, you can very easily uh, take out um, the spent flowers and replenish and um, how something that's going to last for you through the holiday season. So really nice and simple. Okay, so now that we have the side piece done, I'm going to do a couple of smaller vase arrangements to put on your table. Um, I love, um, again, those those uh, mixes of metal, they're great, but uh, different sizes and shapes are uh, fun as well. Uh, we do hear quite a bit um, people saying, you know, centerpieces, I love them, but there's no room on the table for food, or the centerpiece is so big that I can't see the person across from me um, during dinner. So I think using like these little julep cups are great. You can use little votive holders, um, just anything that's small or, um, or interesting color, interesting shape to add a little bit of dynamic to the table. So I'm gonna start off with these little julep cups and I still have that um, those bits of greenery that, um, that I was keeping from the vase arrangement. So again, the same as with the other vase arrangement, make sure to clean off those stems, really, really nice. Little bits of, little bits of green in there. It's nice when, um, if you've got an arrangement on a side table, such as the one that I did um, earlier, if you can pull some of those same flowers onto the table, just so everything flows really nicely. So keeping that kale, oops, keeping that kale really nice and and low. You can see that the contrast with the gold is really pretty there too. I also have these really um, these really nice uh, roses called Free Spirit. They're one of our favorites. This is the garden um, garden variety of rose. So uh, this variety of this of the Free Spirit has a little bit more of a heart shaped center to it than the um, the more common Ecuador variety of uh, Free Spirits. But you can see again the heart shape, but a more saturation of a color. So it has more of that orangey to it, which is uh, which is really really pretty. I think that looks really pretty with the purple. And when you're making these little arrangements too, just make sure to keep turning them and turning them. Um, it's nice if you can look at them from the side too, so that when you're sitting down at the dining room table, you can see the flowers from the sides. Most people are not looking over top of your arrangement. So to focus on the floral design just in the center, you really are, you are really missing out on the beauty of the flowers. So if you can put those flowers kind of on the edges a little bit, almost as if they're spilling out a bit more. And then we have the skinnia, which is really popular this time of year. It comes in a really nice chartreuse green, but the burgundy is pretty, and the burgundy is gonna pick up the red in the orchids behind me, which uh, goes with the art on the wall and the red in the tree. There we go. And finding more of those little bits of, of green as well. You can use little, um, tea light holders if you have some. Um, anything that's kind of little and interesting, again, works well for, for clippings. 
you could do this type of arrangement um, if you have if you had a big floral arrangement and some things are kind of starting to go on it you can um, take some of the, the ones that are still good in there and, uh, and use them this is a burgundy mini um, amaryllis so that all those buds are going to really open up um, nice and beautiful So again, not overcomplicating it, just make it really nice and loose and, and interesting. Um, make sure it looks really pretty from all angles so that um, all of your guests get to enjoy your beautiful arrangements on the table. And it's nice to keep your color palette um, fairly minimal. If you could keep it to you know, shades of the same color or, you know, max three types of colors. It just stops it from looking so, um, so busy. And especially, you know, with holiday decorating, it can be, it can be a little busy. You know, we've got a, a big tree right here in the dining room and usually I have a, a nice, beautiful tropical plant there, but I'm sure you, um, I'm sure you see it too in your homes that it just feels like there's so much stuff and color can, uh, can really do that for you. And it can really be confusing on the eye. So it's nice if you can keep it um, rather minimal with your color palettes. Like if you wanted to do um, just all shades of red would be stunning with winter greens or you know adding a little bit more. Um, if you just want to do all whites and whites with some cream in there with the green, that's a, a classic um, color palette as well. So you can see how I'm breaking up the heights a little bit here, which is going to be really nice on the table. Uh, we do have these candle holders at the store too that have um, the shades of the blue or the plum or the um, more of like the amethyst color in there too. And then once I set this table, I can take these uh, candles and kind of mix them around and they just kind of spread it out so there is room um, for food platters and things like that. There's room for water glasses and wine glasses and people don't feel as if they're, um, they're eating in the flowers, which nothing wrong with that when it comes to, um, I think it's a great thing. But yes, there's a balance we have to make sure there's room for the food on the table. It's not just always flowers. Whereas in my world, it would probably just be flowers everywhere in my homes. So you can see with the, the bunches of greens, you can really get quite a bit out of them. So all these bits are just, uh, they're gold, they're the money. I'll even take some of these pieces of kale that I broke off from the other one and just pop that in there to give a little bit of color too. There we go. And then that will pick up the purple in the, the purple of the candle holders up there. And then the amber will be picked up with the free spirit gardens that are there. got some cute little arrangements and I'll finish up with these other ones and I'll show you what the whole table looks like when it's done. Okay so we're all set. So I finished all the little arrangements and I placed them down the table. I have this um, kind of candelabra thing I've had for years and sometimes I use it sometimes I don't. I thought it'd be fun to add it to the tablescape today. I use these um, really nice blue candles that uh, pick up the blue in the um, in our chairs that we have. Also picks up a, a little bit of the blue in the dress, and it's just an interesting color that I think you wouldn't normally see um, with a lot of traditional Christmas arrangements. Maybe more Hanukkah, but not with the Christmas. And then um, our mix of the uh, gold metal containers. So we've got the free spirit roses. We have that uh, beautiful dark ornamental kale, the skimia the um, red amaryllis, 
and um, yeah, I, just, I love the way this has come together. There's still lots of room for um, uh, platters on the ends, and this is a perfect setting for four, so water glasses, wine glasses, um, people can still see in and amongst. I love the goldy glow of the candles above and also on the table. And um, yeah, I'm just really happy with how it turned out, and it's a little bit of an unexpected color palette for the holiday season. But I really hope you enjoyed it, and I hope this gives you a little bit of inspiration to use just little tiny containers that you have around um, around the house, um, and just make your own holiday table centerpiece that is easy, fun, and practical as well. So we hope to see you soon at the shop, and thank you so much for coming to my house. See you soon.